What's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, the latest physique update from Good Vito. A little over three weeks out from his pro debut at the Arnold Classic South America, which is going to be the beginning of April, April 5th through the 7th. And frankly, this might be the most impressive update I think I've seen of Good Vito from this entire prep. So he looks obviously really lean here. A lot of vascularity. Really all over. Legs, abs, chest, arms, like everything. So I feel like this is one of the more anticipated pro debut that we've had in a very long time. Because a quick refresher, he was trying to compete in some of the shows towards the end of the year. Last year, he was trying to qualify for the 2023 Mr. Olympia. But he had issues with his visa, um, I believe trying to travel to Italy and I guess it was Spain. So he wasn't able to do those shows because of visa issues. And then he had a baby towards the end of last year. And then towards the end of last year, early 2024, um, he had the abdominal surgery on his umbilical hernia. And it seems like at this point, we've been talking about good veto for three, four years now, even before he earned his pro card. And there's certainly no doubt that the guy is talented. And so with his pro debut, I think a lot of people not only, you know, probably want to see him win, but I think a lot of people just want to see him stand next to some of these guys um, because we know Raphael Brandau is doing the Arnold South America. We know that Carlos Thomas Jr., another newer pro that had recently made his pro debut, is doing the show. And I'm sure we're going to get the official lineup here in maybe two weeks. We'll know everybody that's doing it. But even just to see good Vito next to Raphael, I think will be very telling of how good he really is when he stood next to a pro. Not just any pro, Raphael is one of the better ones. To see if some of this hype is justified, because I think when he won his pro card, a lot of the hype was justified. He looked like, um, he, I mean, he definitely looked like a pro bodybuilder on that stage. But he was competing against amateurs. And of course... He looks crazy on Instagram, which we've had that with a lot of guys. So I think this is going to be a really big deal for him, and especially if he does well here. I mean, imagine if he does really well. Imagine if by some chance he wins the Arnold Classic Brazil, and that would mean that he somehow beats Rafael Brandau, who just had an amazing showing at the Arnold Classic Ohio. That would be massive momentum for good video going into the Olympia, then he'd be qualified after winning that South America show, which is another interesting thing uh, because he lives in Brazil right now, which I believe is why he's doing that show. So I'm hoping if he does qualify for the Olympia, he doesn't have any travel issues getting to the U S to actually do the Olympia. Cause I thought it was odd that he had travel issues getting to, you know, Italy, Spain, and we still don't even really know the exact reason behind that. Is it because he's from Russia? Is it because he has legal issues? It was never really made clear why. But this is definitely one I'm really excited for. I mean, looking at his front double, which I think is arguably his best pose, it really shows off his shape well. Um, the amount of size that he's got and the taper that he's got in that pose. You can see his midsection very, very clearly in this pose. I think a lot of people are wondering if the surgery is going to impact it. Um, because of the similar thing that happened with Phil Heath. But he looks fantastic in this pose. I think a lot of people now are really excited to see what he brings at his pro debut at the Arnold South America. But next up in the news, let's look a little bit more into the near future here with the Arnold Classic UK and some recent updates that we got from Akeem Williams. Now, I think this is an interesting thing to think about here with Akeem because of how well he ended up doing at the finals of the Arnold Classic US and there's some real factors to consider here going into this show that maybe Akeem is one of the guys that we should be talking about as a potential top three guy at the Arnold Classic UK. Because right now, we still don't have confirmation about Hadi Chupin. I'm assuming he's going to be able to get there, but we still don't have confirmation that he is. So he's still pending. Samson Dada, we know, is coming off of an illness. And he's also left his coach. So I think that makes it a little bit less certain that Samson is going to come in here and be dominant. You've got John De La Rosa, you've got Akeem, James Hollingshead, Antoine Vaillant, and Mo Chabon. 
And of these guys, John, James, and Sampson had all placed ahead of Akeem, even though Akeem was in seventh at prejudging at the Arnold Ohio, moved up to fourth place with his final score at the Arnold Classic Ohio, and ended up placing sixth, which was the average of those two scores. But at finals, he was in the callout with Sampson, Hottie, and Raphael. Raphael's not even here. I think it's premature to say that Hottie's not going to be there. But if he's not, and Akeem looks as good as he did at the finals of the Arnold Ohio, there's a possibility here we could have a battle between Sampson and Akeem for the one and two spots. I think that's a very realistic thing if Sampson looks as good as he looked at the finals for the Arnold. And frankly, I'm still a little bit blown away by it, re-watching the finals for the Arnold and looking at how good Akeem actually did look. The transformation that he made between prejudging and finals at the Ohio show really is pretty impressive. I mean, you look at him at the finals, he looks incredible, completely different. His conditioning was like on a whole different level than it was at prejudging, and he really did look like he belonged in that call out with Samson, Hottie, and Raphael. And I even saw yesterday more on the Samson thing. I mean, Samson did like a thousand stories yesterday answering questions. We don't have to talk too much about it because we've talked a lot about Samson Dowd of stories in the last couple of videos. But he again addressed the Milos thing, addressed the fact that his wife is going to be um, coaching him through peak week for the Arnold UK. And, and we're not going to do a whole story about the Samson stories because there really wasn't a whole lot of additional information in that Q&A that he did. Uh, but someone did ask him why he didn't speak on the Milos thing or why he didn't publicly thank Milos. Um, and Samson's response was, everything doesn't need to be on social media. So that was kind of that. So we still don't really have a, an answer as to why they split. It does still seem a little bit odd to me. But again, the point here is I think that is going to factor in. Even if his wife did prep him for uh, Prague and Romania during peak week, I think it's got to be a factor. I mean, even the stress of, of the breakup with the coach. So when you consider all those things about this UK lineup that we've got this weekend, by the way, we don't know if Hottie's going to be there. Samson's coming off an illness, coming off this breakup with his coach. Raphael's not going to be there. I think you're setting, there's a, there's a setup here for a real shot at Akeem to do pretty well. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think Akeem has a shot here? Now, next up in the news. We got a recent physique update of Nick Walker at under 10 weeks out from the 2024 New York Pro. Now, Nick Walker obviously is already a one-time New York Pro champion. He's going to be going up against Tony O'Burton, who was last year's New York Pro champion. And as you guys know, Nick Walker was out of the 2023 Mr. Olympia due to a hamstring injury. So this is kind of his big comeback show. And I think his conditioning in this picture for 10 weeks out it's pretty incredible. I mean, Nick is in incredible shape in this update. You can see striated glutes. He's lean. He's vascular. And again, 10 weeks is still almost three months out. I think this is going to be a hell of a comeback show for Nick Walker. And I think he's really going to make a statement and remind people why he belongs on the, up on that Olympia stage. And I think he's going to get a lot of people excited for 2024 when we get to see him on the Olympia stage again. Of course, barring another injury. But I think Nick looks really, really impressive here. Now, the final story that I've got for you guys today, we did get an update from Raphael Brandau. Like we talked about earlier with Good Vito, Raphael is also doing the Arnold Classic South America. So he's also a little bit over three weeks out here. And I think Raphael does have the advantage of the fact that he just competed in the Arnold Ohio, so we know he's going to be in shape because he was just in contest condition a month before the uh, the Arnold Classic South America. So I think that's a little bit of an advantage for him, having the Ohio as, I guess you could say, a bit of a warm-up, but placing third at the Arnold Ohio isn't really a warm-up show. That's a really impressive placing in a really impressive lineup. And I think he probably is the favorite going into the Arnold South America to win that show. I mean, he is Brazil's uh, kind of hometown boy. And he's got a little bit of home field advantage there. So I feel like he's probably the favorite to win. Now, I don't know for sure if uh, Horse MD is doing the Arnold Classic South America. I haven't seen him talk about it, so maybe not. But like I keep saying, we've got a lot of stuff to look forward to. 
between the New York Pro, the Detroit Pro, the Arnold Classic UK this weekend, the Arnold South America, and then all the shows in the late spring and early summer. And before you know it, we'll be back to the Olympia. So make sure you guys subscribe for all the latest bodybuilding news. Like the video, comment, all that good stuff. And as always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.